Welcome to our deep dive into Microsoft Autogen. Today, we're building from scratch a world-class research team powered by Autogen's advanced AI. Our team will feature a savvy researcher, a detail-oriented reporter, a critical critic, and an expert manager, all working in unison. We'll show you step-by-step -step how to create this dynamic team. Plus, for those who want to follow along or experiment further, all the code we use will be available on GitHub. You'll find the link in the description. As always, we set up a new virtual environment. Using a virtual environment in Python streamlines our workflow by managing project dependencies separately, ensuring a smoother, conflict-free development. Then we proceed to install Autogen, and we prepare an app.py file, adding the essential Autogen imports. Starting off by configuring our first Autogen Assistant, because who doesn't like a little digital help? The first one will be a web researcher, and we assign it a LLM configuration. In this configuration, we refer to a JSON file. Config list from JSON is just one of many methods in Autogen for generating API configurations. This JSON file contains the language model and the necessary API key. For this purpose, we create a file named OAI config list, because clearly all good things come with lists. In this file, we specify the model and the OpenAI API key. We choose the newest GPT-4 Turbo model because it's simply the best. Then enter your OpenAI API key. We give the assistant the name Web Searcher, because creativity in naming is our forte. We define its role through a system message, outlining its function. In this case, it's responsible for gathering information, like a digital Sherlock Holmes. Next, we create our second assistant, the reporter. This one is tasked with formulating the actual response to the user, based on the information collected by the web researcher. Our next assistant is the critic. Every team needs a skeptic, whose job is to provide suggestions on how to improve the reporter's answer. Then we create our user proxy. To save time, I've already prepared this and will add it directly to the file. Its main function is to execute code and operations as defined in its settings. It also decides when to end the group chat based on the is termination message condition. Next, we set up the group chat, assigning the involved agents to it. These are the web searcher, the reporter, the critic, and the user proxy, a digital dream team. In addition, we include an empty messages list. Next up is the manager who will lead the chat. This manager also receives an LLN config and is assigned to lead the group chat. We then initiate the actual chat, assigning the manager and a specific task. The first question we want to ask is about the oldest church in Berlin, starting with the easy stuff, obviously. It's like a warm-up for our digital team before diving into the real brain teasers. But do you know the answer? Now we should have everything together and can start the group chat. We see the chat start with the question about the oldest church in Berlin. The web searcher has already gathered the information and the reporter is working on the response. The critic is already giving his opinion and tips on how to further improve the answer. We'll interrupt here for a moment to ensure the web searcher can actually search the web and add a file named searchpi for this. Here we add prepared Python code, which is tasked with efficiently conducting searches. In Autogen, function declarations like search declaration are crucial for guiding agents. They specify which parameters are needed, their format, and the conditions under which the function should be called, ensuring agents operate effectively and accurately. The actual implementation of functions like search must align with its predefined declaration. This specific search function, for example, is designed to query Google with a date filter. 
Any implementation will work effectively as long as it fits within the scope of its corresponding function declaration, showcasing the flexibility and adaptability of Autogen's framework. The entire code can be found on GitHub, and the link is in the description. We now need to make the functionality available to the respective agents. For this, we first import the search functions and their declaration, and assign the declaration of how the search method works to the web searcher. We do this in the LLN config. We can use the functions keyword for this and provide the search declarations accordingly. Now we must equip the user proxy, which executes the actual commands, with the function, so that when it is asked to perform a search, it calls the appropriate functions. Before we put our newly implemented search function to the test, we need to update the system message, guiding the web searcher to utilize this latest search method. And if everything works, the search function should actually be used. First, we need to add a comma we forgot. We try again. And now it's actually suggested to use the search method with the appropriate arguments. And we see the result of a real search. The reporter can generate a response from this. And the critic should now provide feedback on the answer, especially on the formatting. The web searcher will once again drive a response from the reporter. Next, we aim to significantly improve the system messages. For this, we create a file named prompt.py where we add pre-prepared, established prompts for these roles. These go into detail about what the respective roles should do and especially how the result should look and how it should be formatted. Accurate citations are key to ensuring the validity and reliability of the information retrieved. The critic also thoroughly checks whether the result meets the quality criteria. We now need to assign these new system prompts. For this, we first import them from the Python file, and replace the existing system messages. To implement this change effectively, we must replace each existing system message with the updated versions. Now, as we meticulously implement correct system messages, get ready for a thrilling display of my rusty Vim skills in action, ensuring accuracy has never been this entertaining. Now we can try again. We enlarge the display a bit to follow the group chat. We see the search being conducted again, but we see that the reporter's answer is now much better formatted, showing that even digital assistants can learn new tricks. The critic is now much more detailed and lists several points for further improving the answer. This level of detail is particularly valuable for more complex questions. We observe that the reporter continually refines their answer, until a point where the critic is satisfied and has no further suggestions for changes. We have the flexibility to define the number of rounds ourselves. Let's try a second example. We change the question. Now we ask about the main disadvantages for startups in Germany. This is a significantly more layered question. Here we see the reporter's first answer, which already contains a wealth of information. However, it's immediately noticeable that the formatting is not yet correct. The critic points out several issues including the formatting and especially the Vancouver-style citations, which are not properly formatted. The next version is much better, offering a clean overview, including references. Now the critic also agrees that everything is in order, and we see that the answer has been approved. This demonstrates the strength of having a complete research team that not only provides answers, but also enhances them. If you're curious about integrating this group chat into a web application, don't miss our dedicated Autogen WebSocket video. The link is right in the description for easy access. And if you're finding value in our content, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay updated with our latest tutorials and insights. Your support helps us bring more such informative content to you.